Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.12 where I hope that I have a workable shuttle re-entry script finally. I have done tests without any payload coming back, payload going up but not coming back from 28.6 degree inclination and also the International Space Station inclination of 51.6 and both of those landed on the runway. So whoopee. Uh, but we have to test it with payload coming back and so we have this payload. I have just tested it and it flipped out. So we know that maybe having the 11.7 tons coming back here in this position might not be great for the shuttle's balance or something like that. So I'm just going to put it up there. I don't know where exactly we ought to mount it. We don't have all those mounting points that the shuttle actually had, I think. Um, we certainly don't have any dots. So now I have to pick one or the other and I'm going to pick the forward position, but maybe not so far forward. Forgive me. I'm going to let it float. I just, I'm just going to put it in the middle of the cargo bay and hope that this time it is not going to have any problems. So we were pretty close to landing and everything. It was just uh, in the final part of the descent, like at about 45 kilometers, it started to have issues. So yeah, we don't want it to have issues. Hopefully this will help. Uh, let me test it. One way or another, I'm going to release the re-entry script. You're just going to have to be warned if it has any problems this time. But uh, I don't know what the mass was doing there. But um, yeah, it worked without payload coming back. So that's a start. There's plenty of refinements that could be done. Plenty of things that could be improved. But at least it sort of works in 1.12. And there's been quite a few differences between 1.8.1 and 1.12 to deal with. And I'll talk about those on the way back down. But first, let's launch. So it is just 11.7 tons going up and down. Um, we are not going to release it this time. Plus the docking port, it's probably closer to 12. But taking a look at the launch script, which I had previously released. We'll just go to 28.6 degree inclination, standard inclination out of Cape Canaveral. And the landing site really doesn't matter because in the re-entry script, you type that in anyway. You type in the latitude and longitude that the re-entry script should aim for. It's critical that that is under the path of the shuttle during the orbit that you're coming back. Uh, so of course, if you select a location that isn't under the orbit of the shuttle on that orbit, then the script is going to have a problem with that. It just will sort of keep running until it finds that location underneath the orbit of the shuttle or something like that. So off we go. This is the Space ODY or Space Audi shuttle. I have talked about before in previous videos and I think there is a video that explicitly says Space Audi Shuttle in the title, so if you need to find out more about it, how to get it, etc., probably just type Space ODY on the channel and find that video, and you'll be able to find the information. Other versions of the shuttle, I don't know to what extent they work in 1.12 right now, so keep that in mind. Off go the boosters. I still need to fix the Sceptrons on them though, so they don't spin up or spin out. That is not intentional, but I've been working on the coding rather than the placement of parts right now. And we are close to orbit. Seeing how that shapes up. Always very delicate at this point here. And well, a 95 kilometer periapsis is a little bit high. The external tank will still deorbit like that, but it would be better if it was lower. We certainly got everything we could out of it, so there is that. All right, we have completed the orbital burn 303 by 259. And we're going to go up to a decent sort of orbit to test this out. So, I mean, we have the fuel to use, so we might as well use it. 
So we'll take it up to basically the ISS orbit. But of course there is no ISS. This is the 28.6 degree inclination, not 51.6. But at least the same height. We are not deploying the cargo. The cargo is staying in the bay. It's the av gas there, 12 tons worth, or a little bit less than 12 tons. I'll just get into a one hour and 33 minute orbit altogether. Okay, that's one hour and 33 minutes. Before the script to work, we need to be in a one and a half hour orbit for now. That's something I want to fix or improve on, but for now, that'll have to work because it's easier to make the calculations like that. And also it's easier to line up back with Cape Canaveral if you're in a one and a half hour orbit. That means it's exactly 16 orbits per day. And so we can calculate things out a little bit better. It's a little bit more complicated if you want to launch from Cape Canaveral and land at Edwards. I know how to do that, but it does require a little bit more thought. And that's a one and a half hour orbit. Okay, we are going to time warp for a day. And let me get the oxygen generator on. This is something you might need to remember. Start locks to Gox converter. Okay, so on the next orbit we'll be coming down. And we are coming down with payload. And hopefully that payload is balanced this time. I am not editing the re-entry script. It's the same one that I did the previous tests with without any changes. Okay, Retroburn has started and we are pointing retrograde. Uh, I might need to tell the script to angle up a bit, but it probably doesn't matter too much. Okay, so the retro burn brought us to a periapsis of negative 8 kilometers. And that's a little bit lower than it would be without the payload. The way that it compensates for having the payload in the bay coming back down is to have a lower periapsis. We have 54 meters per second left indicated in the tail system for the RCS, but there is also RCS in the nose that isn't counted in that delta V. So, we have a little bit more than that. Yeah, right now it's immediately felt like it's falling short. That's why it's pitched to 37 degrees instead of 40. And that's probably just down to the fact that we have a lower periapsis than the baseline. So, we are entering the atmosphere early. One of the major problems that I had adapting the script was that I didn't notice it initially, but in 1.8.1, the shuttle bounced up and actually had a vertical speed at certain portions of its descent. Uh, so I had to account for that in the script because otherwise the calculations would go weird when you have you're, when you're suddenly going up in altitude uh, during portions of the descent that can throw things off. So I created certain sections of the script to deal with that bounce up. But here in 1.12, it doesn't bounce up nearly that much. And so that threw it off. In fact, sometimes it doesn't actually get a positive vertical speed. And so those sections had to be eased off a bit. Instead of having it uh, look for a positive vertical speed, I had to look for a vertical speed above negative 20 meters per second in order to sort of detect when it bounced. I mean, you could just see when the vertical speed is trending towards zero or trending higher but then it'll overreact so i wanted to have a threshold for when to sort of treat things a little bit differently well it's basically felt like we were falling short the whole way though so maybe some tuning up would be better basically that suggests that maybe the amount by which I'm compensating for the payload might be a little bit off. And the manifestation of that, whether that's true or not, will come close to the end. Right now it's feeling like we're falling short. 
uh, if it turns out that it's that's because we were overcompensating for the payload, then close to the end we'll see it pitching up and doing more S turns in order to burn off speed. So we did get positive vertical speed this time. It did actually bounce up. So that probably threw it off a little bit as far as the idea that I was falling short. In fact, we're seeing it pitch up to the higher pitch 45 degrees instead of going to 40. And that's because the bounce up was stronger than expected. We are using a lot of pitch up. The payload might be a little bit too far up. The actual center of mass. Well, it's not too far off, but with the shuttle, you know, if it's a little far off, that's a lot. And basically you've got one meter of leeway. So we certainly wanted that tank closer to that dot. <laughs> oh well. Well, let's get rid of the dot. Okay, well, now it's just a race as far as making sure we get lower before the RCS runs out. Don't know if that's going to work out for us. And that's it. And yeah, the shadow's going askew. Okay, well, I'm going to test it again. We'll move the payload back a bit. And we will also just skip the going to a higher orbit thing. We'll carry extra fuel down as well. That'll make it even heavier. But yeah, that's preferable to running out of propellant. So, all right, I'm not going to watch this explode. There's Florida over there, but, and potentially we could have gotten there properly, but not this way. Okay, well, at least shuttle launches are enjoyable enough. Okay, still problematic booster separation, but, you know, as long as they don't actually knock off any control surfaces or wings or anything, at least it's fine for now. Alright, we are in orbit. Uh, I hope you don't mind the fact that I will be expediting this. I'm going to get into a standard, well, we are sort of in a standard orbit, but it's a bit lopsided. So we're going to circularize that a little bit better, but instead of trying to get to a higher orbit, we'll just come straight down from this so that we definitely have enough RCS fuel, and we'll see how that goes. All right, retroburn initiated. And even if it doesn't work this time, I'll link what I've got in the video description for now, uh, because at least it worked without the payloads. And it would just about figure that it'd start not working properly when I decide to record, of course. <laughs> of course it'd be like that, right? So, yeah. Of course, this is technically a more extreme test because we're carrying the extra fuel down as well. So, we are expecting a lower periapsis this time. And it'll be pushing the script further out of whack compared to the no a low down version. Okay, negative, basically negative 11 kilometers this time. Well, the situation is not unlike previously. Last time we had it pitched down to 37 degrees because it felt like it was falling short, and that's the same idea, and mainly because of the lower periapsis. Well, it's balanced well enough for now. So not doing too badly in that department. And still pretty balanced under 70 kilometers, so I put the payload in the right position. Ironically, the net result of that is that we're coming down heavier than before. In fact, we have practically, well, more than half of our fuel left. So, yeah. Yep, very efficient when the payload's in the right position. Oh, we're even gaining a second bounce. Now, 1.8.1 we got a second bounce, but this is the first time I've seen it here. 
And because of the second bounce, we're going to have to pitch up to kill some of this. We didn't want a second bounce. Well, that uh, second bounce was unexpected, but not insurmountable, I don't think. As we approach the coast of Florida. And we're coming down with 178 meters per second, so we could have gotten to a higher altitude and come back down and all that business. It's just that the payload was in the wrong position. We can see the cape now. We're going a little bit fast. We'll see how well we can land, if we can land. So of course not allowed to S-turn as much when we're this close. Oh, that is not supposed to do that. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like that. Don't do that. Uh... It should stop that. <laughs> totally get that you're not happy with the situation, but this is not the way to go, shuttle. Okay, well, it don't, didn't go too far out of whack this time. But we are going past a bit. And it only hold, hands me control at 15 kilometers, so... Looks like uh, the with the payload coming back down situation needs some touch-up. I am going to risk taking control a little bit early in order to try and get it back to the Cape. Oh, not what I wanted. <laughs> I didn't want to take control inside the cockpit. Thank you. Out here will be fine. Just wanted to start turning a little bit earlier since we've passed it. But we have to be careful. That's a 4G turn already. Well, it is still visible, so there's a chance. I will dump the fuel. I won't use it propulsively. Oh, do I not a ship manifest? Okay, well, it won't be very propulsive, but I'm just going to dump it like this. I say it won't be very propulsive because, well, actually we got higher ISP than I think we ought to right now. But we're still decelerating, you can see. I thought the ISP of it at this altitude would be way lower than that, so I don't know about that configuration. There's still a little bit of propellant remaining in those pods because, I guess, still have residuals. This is KSP 1.12. Well, I'm probably going to have to kill some speed here. Of course, I am using atmospheric autopilot. That's why SAS is not on. Okay, gear down. Locked view. Okay, here we go. Oh, well, that's a lot of angle of attack. And... Okay, touchdown. No body flap explosion. <laughs> so worried about the body flap right there. Okay, all right. The drag chute automatically deploys. And we made it. A little bit off center, but here we are. So I will link the reentry script in the video description. Of course, it needs plenty of work, but here it is. Just remember that it has to start in line with your landing site and basically in a one and a half hour orbit. 
preferably as circular as possible. So that is the idea and uh, I've made other videos about it so you can see the details. This was just a test. Uh, after I refine it a bit maybe I'll do another going over the details video down the road. But for now it works in 1.12 and I look forward to using the shuttle more in 1.12 as well. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I will see you next time.